Zscaler is an official SAP partner and offers a highly complementary cloud security solution for SAP ERP deployments. The Zscaler Private Access Service is supported for use with HANA Enterprise Cloud as listed on the Advanced Edition Roles and Responsibilities document available via the SAP website. In this demo, we'll be covering all of the primary setup and configuration steps required for ZPA with, with SAP HANA. However, note that subscribers to the HANA Cloud offering will only need to perform a subset of these tasks. In this segment, we'll be integrating Zscaler Private Access with an identity provider. In this example, it's Azure Active Directory. First, log in to the administrator portal for Zscaler Private Access, https colon slash slash admin.private.zscaler.com. Let's navigate to Administration and IDP Configuration under Authentication. I have already configured single sign-on configuration for administrators. The help documentation is available at help.zscaler.com. Search for configuration guide for Microsoft Azure AD. Next, log on to Azure AD as administrator and click on Enterprise Applications and search for Zscaler Private Access. Select Zscaler Private Access and rename the application as appropriate. Then click Create. Next, we're going to want to assign users or groups to the Enterprise application. So if we click Assign Users and Groups, and then Add User or Group, In this example, I'm selecting ERP users as a group. The user ERP client at dhumepro.co.uk is a member of this group. And click Assign. Then click Single Sign-on and then SAML. Then within the ZPA admin portal, click Add IDP Configuration. and then configure a name for the IDP. Ensure user is selected for single sign-on. The ZPA supports multiple identity providers. This authentication domain is used within my Azure AD tenant. Next, you can download the service provider metadata, which will then upload within the Azure AD configuration. We can click pause here and resume the configuration at a future time. Then upload the metadata file within the enterprise application. I'll rename and update the fields as required. Alternatively, you can update this as described within the configuration guide within the help portal. Click save. And then download the federation data metadata file from the Azure AD SSO configuration screen. Then you can resume the configuration within the IDP provider within the ZPA admin portal and upload the IDP metadata file here. Notice that the certificate for the IDP has been updated accordingly. Click Save. Next, we will configure SKIM, short for System for Cross Domain Identity Management. SKIM allows for attributes to be provisioned into a database and consumed within ZPA Access Policy. These attributes can be updated without a user requiring to provide a fresh SAML assertion during re authentication. Navigate to the recently configured IDP and click Edit, then enable SKIM Sync and generate a bearer token. Copy this bearer token during configuration, as if lost, this will need to be regenerated. In Azure AD, then click Provisioning. Change the provisioning mode to Automatic. Paste the tenant URL and bearer token that you 
that you retrieve from the ZPI admin portal. And test, test the connection and then click save. Then click start provisioning. And provisioning has been successful as one user and one group has been successfully provisioned. To utilize scheme attributes and policy, the configuration must be enabled. When enabling this setting, be aware that existing connecting ZPA users will be forced to re-authenticate to the service. Can then review attributes and users provisioned within the skin database. By navigating to skin management, and then clicking on skin attributes, and then skim users accordingly. Here we can see my ERP client at dqmpro.co.uk has been successfully provisioned. Now I will configure the app connectors. Documentation is available on help.zscaler.com. Search configuring app connectors. First of all, we will head towards Administration and click on App Connectors. Then click on Add App Connect. We will create a new provisioning key. Choose the signing certificate as the connector. We will now create a new App Connector group which we will name SAP HANA Cloud. The App Connector software update can be scheduled to a time that is appropriate. App Connectors update one at a time within an App Connector group to ensure availability of the service. Next, I will choose an App Connector location. In this example, I am selecting London. Next, create a provisioning key. The reuse times for a provisioning key can be selected. The provisioning key is linked to an app connector group, and so any app connector provisioned with this provisioning key will be added to this connector group. The provisioning key can be copied from this review section or can be retrieved from the, the App Connector provisioning key tab at a later stage. Links to documentation for deploying App Connectors in various environments, including Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services, is available here. Now that the app connectors and groups have been provisioned within the admin portal, it's now time to deploy the app connector. This may be performed by yourself or a third party. Zscaler recommends that within AWS, app connectors are deployed using the M5A XLarge for production workloads with 4GB of RAM and 8GB of disk space. Each app connector supports 500 megabits of throughput when double encryption or encryption of the microtunnels is disabled. To increase capacity, simply scale horizontally by deploying additional app connectors within an app connector group. App connectors should be deployed within pairs within an app connector group. When deploying an app connector within AWS, the provisioning key can be inserted via an echo command as part of a launch template. Once an app connector has been deployed, it's now visible within the ZPA admin portal. Within the app connector visibility, we can see CPU, memory, and um, 
the amount of traffic that's been sent via a, an app connector. Also, if you navigate towards the app connector session under administration, you can now see that the SAP HANA Cloud app connector has successfully been deployed and is also updated automatically. Now we're going to go and create an application segment. We're going to define the application as a, with a name that's relevant. And we're going to define the application as its fully qualified domain name. This could, of course, be a wildcard. We can cover multiple applications or hosts covered by wildcard. The application was, will be listening on TCP port 80. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new segment group, which can effectively group multiple application segments within this group. Next, we're going to configure a new server group. which we have dynamic discovery enabled, and we are assigned to the SAP HANA Cloud app, app Connector group. Now that we've defined the application segment, we now need to create an access policy. We'll define it as a relevant rule based around the users that will need to access this application, although this may differ within your environment. Next, we can define the criteria. So we're going to select the application segment or segment group. We can also restrict access based around SAML or scheme attributes that have been received from the identity provider. Now I will configure the client connector within the mobile portal and describe the process of deploying the Zscaler client connector. I've configured an app profile for this demonstration. The specific app profile is not required for all use cases and typically um, multiple users within different groups will be applied with the same app profile. This app profile is assigns the, forwarding profile, the ERP forwarding policy where ZPA is enabled on and off network. This configuration may be different based upon your organizational requirements. In this environment, clients will be enrolled within Zscaler Internet Access, but will also receive entitlement for Zscaler Private Access. It's worth mentioning that, um, that Zscaler Internet Access is not required to be able to deploy Zscaler Private Access. The client connector can be deployed to endpoint machines via an MDM such as Intune or via group policy or any other depo software deployment tool with defined parameters to simplify deployment and enrollment to end users. In this example, I'm going, I will deploy the client connector using MSI exec with the parameters for my tenant. My tenants on zscaler3.net for the Zscaler Internet Access Tenant, and my user domain is dhumepro.co.uk, which I use for the authentication domain. You can see here I have the parameters. I'm just going to execute this now. And this is just to run. You can see here that the client connector has started is redirected towards Azure AD. Now, if this was a domain join machine, I might be able to authenticate transparently, for example. And now I'm going to authenticate using the username.
now we're going to see that I have authenticated so ERP client at dhumepro.co.uk and said scalar internet access enabled as well as private access. Now that this client is enrolled in my Zscaler's tenant and is configured with Zscaler Internet Access and Private Access, I will now attempt to connect to a configured application, saphana.dhumepro.co.uk. In this example, I'm just connecting to a simple web page. Now I will disable the ZPA service at the client connector and refresh the page. I am now unable to access the resource as the resource is not publicly available and is only available via my ZPA tenant and only for users that match upon very specific access policy. Within the ZPA admin portal, I can review logs of successful connections to this newly defined application. Notice that access logs are related to the strict policy that was previously configured. This concludes the demonstration. Thank you for watching.